Chris's concept for the video was a mammoth pro-celebrity karaoke sing-along, with Brian and Andy taking centre stage, in a never-to-be-repeated collaboration with the Proclaimers. It's good, but I'm kind of thinking it looks a bit rehearsed. Filming took place at Elstree Studios, where once again Peter found himself on both sides of the camera. Yeah, a bit lower. Yeah, that's it. Peter's a great multitask. I mean, if you look at what he's doing on a day, he's acting in it, he's directing it, and he's talking his northern gobbledygook as well. If you do it and linger a bit here and just yeah, get him like silhouette in here, so it's cracking. And key playback. <laughs> My favourite bit is, as we were singing it, we have... Then it's a go in some more. da 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 to ba 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 And then on the last take, I went... And you can see me just joining in and laughing. Bobby Davro's reaction's just absolutely priceless because he just... He couldn't believe it, and everyone's singing Bobby Davro. If you ever see Bobby Davro, you should go up to him and do that. Definitely. I'm going to. Filming for the video was almost complete, but it would take an appearance from Sir Michael Parkinson and a disappearance from Ronnie Corbett before Amarillo would be catapulted into the hearts of the British public. Well, we were just told that we were going to sort of muck around with this silly song, and it seemed to be a wonderful way of being stupid with a great friend of mine, Ronnie Corbett, who, again, for all this sort of terribly sort of pompous. He's a very stupid man, basically. He loves being stupid. So the idea appealed to us, and we both, of course, liked Peter, so we thought, yeah, let's give it a go. I mean, Ronnie comes in, he's 75, we get on treadmills, we're marching along, singing a song. All you notice was, as soon as we got a feel of it, we started enjoying it. Little Ronnie was chirping away, that chirping he was, like a little wren. I've not seen him like that since the last time I was at the Palladium. And he put his foot down and he put it on the non-revolving bit. That's what happened. And then the next thing I saw was he flew past me horizontally like that. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> Peter started laughing and I started laughing. There's nothing to laugh at at all. Peter knew he got gold in the can, basically. That was it. And we all knew that. We all knew it would be one of those things that would be played again and again and again because it's just funny. And that was the funniest thing that has ever happened to me. I laughed. So I laughed. I tell you, I laughed. About four o'clock in the morning, I sat up in bed laughing hysterically because I just couldn't laugh enough. I'd always been a huge fan of Texas right from the very first album, and I met Charlene. Just bumped into a backstage and we had a really nice chat. And I said, if you ever want to do a pop video, I'd love to like get involved. I mean, I was obviously really flattered that he would, you know, consider doing something with us and um, sent him a couple of the songs and let him hear them and see what he thought. As a young lad, Peter had a voracious appetite for film and television, so it's no coincidence that the video to sleep is littered with parodies of classic scenes from the 80s. I just got the idea of sort of like doing Ghost, an officer, gentleman. Hello, Lionel Richie. Hello. We we're going to do flash dance as well, but um, Shelley couldn't weld. Oh, my love. At one point, we were filming the ghost scene, and there was me sitting in front of you know my wheel doing my pottery. I had to crouch behind her. <laughs> so that you couldn't see. Then I had to, like, come up, like, over his shoulder. And then, of course, typical Peter is, you know, you're doing something and you're taking it really serious, and off he goes, like, flicking you, nip me when you're doing something, so then it all get kind of, like, a bit carried away. And we did that shot, we were just slapping the clay everywhere. It was great fun. Watch my shot! Well, what can I do? Thank God. What fuck the fuck <laughs> <laughs>
we saw, they sang. Uh, oh, uh, One simple dream, two million people, and now just three remain in tonight's final. Ah, Wayne. I know I can win this for my family, especially our grand. Geraldine. Singing has always been my life. I was born with the pop factor. That's why I can't lose this competition. And two up, two down. We know we can win this. Britain has got the pop factor, and you're looking at it. Tonight's the night. It's the final. And it's up to you. Only you can decide who is crowned champion. The cameras are set. The phone lines are ready. The lights are rigged. It's time to prove that Britain has got the pop factor. And possibly a new celebrity Jesus Christ soap star superstar. Strictly on ice. Fifteen weeks ago, our finalists began their intrepid journey with highs, lows, laughter, tears and quite a few surprises along the way. Let's take a look. I have no idea how much hard work goes into a show like this. It's just all singing, all dancing. One minute you're singing, next minute you're dancing, next minute you're singing and dancing. You can sing without dancing, and you can dance without singing, but whatever way you look at it, it's all singing, all dancing. Even though things were going well in the show, behind the scenes, the press were about to unearth a shocking secret. They revealed that prior to the competition, Geraldine had, in fact, been a man called Jerry King, a popular pianist on the Irish ferry circuit. With relentless media attention, Geraldine felt she had no choice but to defend herself publicly. With a four-year waiting list on the NHS, Geraldine's quest for surgery led her to a Bangkok hospital. One night in Bangkok, try three months. Fiona, I've never known pain like it. I owe everything to Dr. Fung Mei Wow. He certainly knew his onions. Now he's got me. Let's go, girls. I've been handed another envelope. And I'm now about to make my way to the center of the stage. I'm walking down the steps towards our two final acts. I'm here. OK. The voting lines have officially closed. The votes have been counted and verified. Could you please have quiet in the studio? Quiet, please. Right on there. Disable space. One hour into the shift, and Vince Flanagan thinks he's about to witness a parking offence. No bad either, Vince. You can't park that in there, love. Disable space. I'm not parking it in there. I'm just reversing so I can go out and, and turn left. No, you're not. You drive in there, you're going to get a ticket, love. Now you're going to have to go round the long way. I don't want to move this. I don't make the laws, love. I only enforce them. Liberty take. Well, as far as I was concerned, it was just one long uh, time of trying to survive. I saw uh, five people who, who got away, but they were brought back about six weeks later and executed. With the Japanese, you had your head cut off, and that was the end of it. So it wasn't really a viable thing to do. Whoever sees this interview or listens to it may be, be given the impression that I have been overemphasizing things. ex prisoners of war who see this and listen to it, they won't think I'm overemphasizing it. People who doubt what we say or or recall and don't believe what we're saying. You weren't there. You weren't there. 